Sub shooters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to SP Reviews where today we're going to be checking out the latest album from an act named Nine Fingers titled X Love and if we switch over to here we've got a total of nine tracks on this album now to be fair I got ourselves a grand total of uh there's actually one two three four five songs but then we've also got these indie uh interviews these indie interviews for dad march 2015 interludes uh, four of them so it's, that's cool so it's a bit of a, an interesting album i'm not used to having these sort of interview uh kind of breakups uh, what, sort of devices there in the middle of it but that's fine that's totally fine it should be a nice sort of different unique kind of vibe to it which would be good um, we're going to listen through this album from start to finish just before we get into it though. Special thanks to Carl Appleton who apparently was also involved in the production of this album from Nash West Productions. Additionally we have T Davis who was involved in track number 9. And Lethal Needle was the producer of the music on that track as well. He made the beat. Or they made the beat should I say. We're going to listen through this album from start to finish. I'm going to hear what you think. Let's go starting with Burn. Okay, that's a very pretty synth sound we've got there. I mean, I'm assuming that synths. Or electric, um... Plucks or something like that. Interesting uh, combination there with those drums as well. The drums are nice and thick in the mix. I don't think I've really heard a combination of colorations like that before. Oh. The end of us, cause I've not felt There's a lot of resonance in that bass response. Resonance in the bass response. Yeah, no, no, I think that is a word or a series of words I can say there. Yeah, no, th there is a nice amount of sub bass in here. I'm glad we didn't have more of it than that because I feel like it would have been a little bit overwhelming, but there's a good sort of balance at the moment. Oh, nice side chaining of the percussive elements as well. Oh, okay. It's kind of a catchy kind of like, how do I kind of, a, it's got an indie pop kind of vibe and a synth pop kind of vibe to it at the moment, which is a interesting mix, especially with the vocal style here. I, I kind of dig what Nine Fingers is going on here, was goes going with, because I think I've listened to Nine Fingers before previously and I know like a video I've done, but um, you know, it's great to hear this new side of him. Good to hear that they're still continuing with this music stuff. Interesting album art as well here. Here's the album art down here for X Love. Uh, where are we going next? Oh, that's a fun drum drum break there. I feel like this interesting chord progression is getting a little bit more context now. We're kind of sliding that. Bam, bam. I mean, we might be, we might have typically gone for like a parallel minor or something like that. We might be making a parallel major in here. Oh, nice break. Nice, let them out, nice focus on these particular parts here. I think having more of an emphasis on certain lines can help break up a verse and make the performance less monotonous, you know what I mean? Obviously, we've got some really interesting vocal melodies going on here in these verse sections, but if you have that extra bit of intensity in the second one, it kind of keeps it sounding fresh. Oh, it's actually kind of slick, to be honest. I think I'll go back a little bit to appreciate this new section here all by itself. I'm wondering if this is the section we had before that was an instrumental, and now we're just adding a little bit of flourish and um, a little bit of that, that extra vocal layer is quite welcome in this, this section here. A little bit more of an extra part of the story then. I mean, a little bit of an extra angle than what we had before, you know? Oh, 
I can't stop loving you, I don't know how, I don't know how. Yeah, as per the previous verse, it does not sound like this is necessarily a healthy relationship that they're in here. It sounds like there's a little bit of uh, uncertainty about it, a bit of tension there, you know. I remember he was talking about like them holding him down or holding them down so they couldn't sort of the heights they were previously. We're just questioning our role and our existence in this situation. I think that's weirdness or the kind of kookiness of the situation we have with these harmonies and these kind of almost majestically magical synth elements and everything like that is partly because of the strangeness of what's going on and almost the surreal nature of it. That chord no groove on the drums was catchy as hell, man. Nice call and response there with the, the, that melodic line on the synth, that lead melody there. It's kind of nice to have a vocal melody be the, the response to the call, you know what I mean? Oh, damn. For assigning me to a broken dream. Different layers of development of our understanding of the situation. It's uh, it's fascinating stuff. I haven't had a track catch me off surprise, you know, off balance like this in quite a while, you know. Typically, the first song off of an album that I review will either be super low-key, so it's like, oh, okay, we're bringing the craziness into it, or it'll smash you in the face, but you'll expect it. I'm still kind of making sense of what it, what's going on with everything in this mix, but it's not because I'm having a bad time or struggling with understanding why it's doing what it's doing. There's just a quirkiness that, um, you know, combined with the more down-to-earth vocal performance that's coming from Nine Fingers is a nice sort of contrast. Nice little bits of high, high head voice inflection there occasionally. But love's not made to build, but burn. I dig it. The lesson I learned. That's that's the hook line there, but there's so much else to appreciate. I see. One kind of, kind of drum kit that is. We're adding a different instrument, a different extra ingredient each time. So I think we're adding another guitar layer on the right side. We now have two vocal layers as opposed to the initial one. Oh, dangly up here, Joe's. Yeah, slick drum grooves as well, man. Like, again, these are easy identifiable sections within the track that are lovely to follow along to. You know, we're talking about something that's quite a serious subject matter, but we're keeping it floaty and almost uh, weirdly energetic. A lot of people go for the real kind of low mood kind of vibe killer kind of sentiment with this kind of stuff, but not Nine Fingers. Nine Fingers is aware that if you go too dark with the music and talk about something, it'd just be a bit too much, especially for an introduction. So to go for these jangly mid to high melodies alongside the chord note kind of house groove we've got going on here, and and the bass and the guitar parts as well for a bit of low and mid to low resonance, it's just, it's, it's a charming, charming combination of elements. I'm liking how we're riffing around that main chord progression we had at the start. And we just had the symbols carry us out. Great, no complaints about that. Well done. Very happy with that. Alongside the story, that the reasons I mentioned within the review itself so far, we we you know I've mentioned how we had distinct sections. Well, we had that core musical motif that was instantiated at the beginning, and we somehow kept it engaging throughout. You know, despite the fact that at some points we were repeating those guitar arpeggios there, those guitar licks. You know, I th and, and you know we did repeat some of those vocal hook lines. I think it's part of the way that Nine Fingers was delivering it. He didn't sound angry or anything like that. It was more just like kind of frustrated with it. It was like someone was trying to have a rational, mature conversation about it. 
and I kind of made it charming, you know. I, I think I've said charming a few times. But yeah, I'm not really sure how to interpret this album so far, and I think that's inherently a good thing. If you get given the entire answer to the equation within the first five minutes, you're kind of screwed, aren't you, for, for getting people to listen through the rest of it. Indy interviews her dad, March 2015. My name is Andy. I am eight years old, and I'm speaking with David Tates, who is my dad. We are recording an interview in Glendale, California. California. In your bedroom. In my bedroom. Who was the love of your life? Can you tell me about him her, or her? Like the romantic love of my life. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would hope that that hasn't happened yet. Um, I had a lot of girlfriends growing up. I was married to your mama for a while, but I'm not with anybody now, so I would hope when I have the romantic love of my life that I would stay with them until I fell over dead. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think I've had the love of my life. I've had a lot of loves that I appreciated very much over time, but as far as the one, uh, that's just never happened. Maybe it never will, I don't know. If I never have a romantic love of my life, then you'll be the love of my life. Okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's a that's a clever thing to put within an album. That that gives a lot of context to burn. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend that that didn't hit a little bit different. You kinda go to the conclusion to what occurred with the story with um but yeah, no, it, apparently things did not work out that way. Sweet kid though, Andy sounded because I know this was this was done like I think seven years ago. Sweet kid. Hopefully, hopefully they're doing well. Hopefully they're well and safe and everything like that. And hopefully Nine Fingers does find someone to love like that. We got dating in your forties though. You know, dating in your forties. Track number three. Actually, before I continue, because I don't, I didn't really say much about in the interviews with Dad, the the first interlude. But yeah, into dating in your forties. Oh, nice piano layer there. Is there like a wishy kind of bass resonance within that alongside the guitars? She loves you in all of the ways that you. I that's a it's a sensational vocal melody. Driving away. I mean, I can't sing as well as he can, but like, I like how you're captivated that by that immediately. There is just the guitar that's double tracked there, so I suppose there isn't necessarily a lead element outside of the piano. But even the piano is side panned. The vocals are in the center, and you automatically are forced to pay attention to that. She likes the sound oh. of your Excellent. voice, and she's asked you to stay. Terrible, to be honest. You running back home? You who ain't sleeping alone. Damn, you who ain't sleeping alone. Trying to figure out why you're running away if you really aren't happy without that person. Damn, dude, we're dealing with some heavy, heavy subject matter here. Ex love. It, it does have a completely different feel to Burn. Burn had a bit more sort of a sense of whimsy to it. Dating in your 40s is someone playing a guitar for themselves to figure out what the hell went wrong. What is that, a Mellotron or something like that on top? What is that, like, wah, 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 what does that sound on top? Great choice with those, uh, the boom, like the kettle drums, the orchestral drums or something like that, you know? Or is that just a kick with a reverb chain on it? She's giving in kind and she fills up your mind when she pulls you down closer inside. And all that you'd like is to stay every night, but you've left and you're back on. 
I like how we're not addressing the hook line of dating in your 40s. It's almost like insinuating that this is exactly what it is like to do so without him needing to spoon feed it to you. Why are you running back home? It's nice to have a little bit of emphasis of running back home, you know? I feel as if we've got as much of the story as we really need to. I love the sound of his voice in the mix. I don't know how he gets that crispness to it, but it shines. It shines through the other instruments and it's splendid. The studio post-production on this track is really good. Really good. I don't know what kind of mic they're using, whether they're using a condenser or something like that. Or whether what kind of room they're being treated in. Oh. Interesting bass response there. It's very pretty at this part. It's still incredibly sad, but at the same time, it's trying to lighten the load a little bit, you know? Dating in your 40s. Again, I assume that this is meant to be chronologically after Burn, where we're trying to figure out what the hell went wrong, why we were being tied down or not let up, or why things didn't work out, and now you're just accepting the fact that you're having to move on beyond that. It makes you wonder how we're going to end it. I can see daughters and love, but I'm not going to assume the direction that we're headed in. Indie interviews are dad, interlude two. Do you remember any of the songs you used to sing to me? Can you sing them now? You want me to sing you the song? Yeah. There was a song I used to sing to you and your sister every single night. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I would sit between the two of you, and I would rub your head, and I would sing you a little song that I made up. So you want me to sing it for you? Yeah. It goes like this. I'd like you to be home to me. Every night I'd come home to you You'd wake up and I'd be there I'd make breakfast we could share In the bath time I understand the effect we're going for with the reverb and it's kind of adorable There's like some some sibilance occasionally but that's okay and you shampoo i'd like you to be home to me every night i'd come home to you you'd wake up and i'd be there i'd make breakfast we could share See, it's just less interesting to listen to without needing the instrumental backing. You gotta show some love to that, man. It's not often you get a singer who can sound engaging or thrilling enough on their own. We drive real far from here to where winter time means snow is here. We'd look at the stars Filled sky, we'd smile, you and I. We'd smile, you and I. Did you just fall asleep? Hmm? <laughs> did you fall asleep while I showed you the song? You did fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, you still got it. <laughs> that That's just, it's something I can't relate to because I'm not a dad. You know, I'm so happy for, for Nine Fingers that he got to have these moments with his daughter and that, you know, in the interviews with dad. I think it's a really beautiful thing. 
And it's actually a really intimate moment that we as listeners are incredibly lucky to be able to be a part of, you know? It's not like you, it'd be really weird, for instance, if you asked for, for like someone to record their conversations with their daughter. Yeah, that's kind of a weird thing to do. Nine Fingers, to find a way to include this part of an album and to illustrate a, a grander concept is, is smart, but it's also, it's like a privilege, you know? So I appreciate Nine Fingers for showing some vulnerability there within their artistic expression we've uh, got uh daughters track number five come back to that guitar there nice layering of the two different guitar parts on either side lay down your head loves and worry about not a thing for i will be here i'll be watching you you can dream if you'd like or you can just close your eyes and let sleepiness slowly fall into you. But don't be afraid of the night. For darkness, it helps us appreciate light. For darkness helps us appreciate light. I think that's a beautiful sentiment to be teaching you, your, 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 your children, you know. And in the morning. Nice addition to the organ here. I think the organ is a smart move here. It's a nice little bit of a coloration and texture we haven't really had so far in this album. We've had like piano parts and everything like that. Nice use of falsetto there as well. Reaching that low note there, nice. Like, part of me is like, are we gonna introduce a drum kit? But it's also like, maybe we can just have the strum guitars. Maybe that's enough, you know? Again, like it's just a long form track. I'm kind of getting lost into it. I like the rolling bass line that we have here with the strum guitars. Nice panning as well. It's kind of nice to have the organ sort of more resonant on the side when the right side is so busy with the strums. You're lovely, you're brave, and you shine so bright. And no trouble will find you, love. Just hold your ground. You are stronger than what they can throw at you. But don't be afraid to feel sad For tears help us fight through the times that are bad Yes, even tears have the place Feel them run down your face Feeling. I just want to say that it's really fantastic that Nine Fingers is letting their daughters express some vulnerability to be able to heal like that that's a really beautiful thing that's that's thank you for that thank you for allowing them to be able to to show that sadness you know Those are falsetto parts are getting a little bit wild now, man, but we're keeping it under control. That rawness is, there's a sense of authenticity to that, you know? 
We're not trying to doctor a sterilized vocal performance here. The singing comes from the heart. Yeah, we didn't really need anything more than this. I mean, like, part of me is like, is there a bass or a double bass involved with this? Beautiful, well done. Nice way to finish it. You know, this is a ballad to his daughters. Regardless of the situation he's in with his own love life and his own relationships with people, he's taking care of his kids. Lovely. Great choice. Again, this is the privilege to be able to hear this, you know? And I actually don't. I don't get many songs come through that where people are talking about their, their sons or daughters like this, you know? I think it's great. Excellent. Fantastic work with that. I'll be right back to review the rest, but before I go, I've had three very unique experiences from Nine Fingers. One track has not been like the other. Dating in your 40s was a lot more somber and this, I mean, this was tender, but in a different way entirely, you know, and then Burn, you know, Burn had those really interesting kind of sort of fantastical synth parts and it just makes me wonder what love is going to be like. <laughs> But I'll see you in a moment. So now after that lovely tribute to his daughters, we're now going to hear more of an interview from Indy. Interlude number three. Do you have any regrets? Oh, I have, I have many, many regrets. I don't think we have enough time to go into all of my regrets. <laughs> you want to know what some of them are? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that kind of Kickstarter, like YouTube ad friendly commercial, our uh, royalty free, like, ba 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 ba, you know, that really cherry stuff. We're about to go into regrets. That's a nice sort of sense of juxtaposition there, isn't it? There's an innocence that comes before the storm. I like the fact that we, we care, we, we, you know, we clearly care about the interview that we're doing. We, we really love our child, but at the same time, we know stuff's going to get heavy in this album. We've got love, number seven. And you, you're too good to be true And it turns out that you're not true You're just another silly dream I have and Nice jazzy chord progressions here. I'm liking the guitar, how guitar-led this entire album has been for the most part. It's outside of the interviews, you know? better than to dream it all Cause every time I jump I fall, fall, fall are there brushes in the background? Or is that the strumming of the guitar? You, there is definitely brushes. Or shakers. The la 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 la, we've already had a lot of the story being told beforehand, is nice to just have as a contrast. We're not having the story put to us all the time. Sometimes it's nice just to have the melody of the, of the singing kind of go in time with the melody of the piano line. That's a new additional element that we haven't had up until now. It's great within this track. It's cool. Oh, we're continuing with that? That's cool. I don't mind that. I'm not mad. Again, and it's just the simple things like having the piano that came in in the chorus section ready rate, you know, certain parts of this verse harmony or this progression here that we've got going on here, just to just to sort of recalibrate a little bit, 
show us that there is a sense of progression as we figure out our regrets and identify the journey we've been on and what could have been done for differently if if it could have been done differently. I dated everyone inside this small town. They tried to hold me, but I just shut down. Cause they're not you. Oh, I see. You're not true. La, 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 la. They're not, you're not, you know, they're not you, but you're not true. It's visceral. You know, it's kind of bittersweet, isn't it? You know, you really get the impression that this guy feels as if he's run out of options. You know, what do you do when you can't find love in a place where you've dated everyone and you ran away from all their potential alternatives? You know, what are your options? It's brutal, dude. As a listener, it makes you feel a sense of sadness and sympathy for what Nine Fingers has gone through, you know? Especially with the interviews with his daughter, you get the impression that this is a man who simply just wanted to be with someone who he could just have that future with and that security with. Without having to do all these, there's arithmetic in his head, you know? Figuring out if he could trust people or not or whether the risk reward was worth it, you know? I think there's an additional like, lady vocal on top of this, that's not, if I'm not mistaken. Having different vocalists in this section here is kind of nice because it kind of indicates that maybe there's other people that are in a similar boat. You know, it's a group of people humming along to it. As if it's a song that a lot of people will be able to relate to. Really simple chord progression here. It's nice to have a, a little bit more flexibility between these two different vocal parts, like the main lead and the backing vocals here. It's quite cool, you know, a little bit of a little bit of dissonance there, but at the same time, it's weirdly gentle, especially with the boom, ba da boom, ba da boom. That kind of uh, what's the name for that? The claw hammer technique or something like that. Kind of sounds like a train rolling on forward, doesn't it? additional guitar melodies or harmonies on the rock. Oh, an accordion. Well, I was not expecting an accordion there, although when you think about love with the Parisian vibe of it, you know, it makes sense. It's a nice uh, additional element there that feels kind of weirdly appropriate. And it's a little bit more on the high end now to make it sound fuller. I don't really think they could put more else, much else more in this by that overdoing it. But that would complicate the concept. just finishing love to remind himself that he's alone everyone says they can relate but then you've got to deal with the consequences of it on your own great song though i've really enjoyed songs like burn dating in your 40s daughters and again these aren't experiences that i'll necessarily be able to relate to because for instance i haven't had kids yet but it's nice for someone to try and explain it and there's that warmth and sincerity there and that genuine love that he feels for his daughters that comes through so effortlessly and believably within these tracks what does your future hold? What does my future hold? Um, well, I don't really know the answer to that. I know things that I would like it to hold. I would like to write more stories. I would like to write some, some comic books. Um, That's I'd like cool. to record more songs one day. Uh, I'd like to work a different job than I do now. I don't like my job very much. Um... And I'd like to just saying the lo-fi hip hop aesthetic works really well with this sentimental commiseration to be in a loving relationship again. This uh, introspection the future. And I want all of those things for my future. But I don't know if any of those will happen. Uh, but I know when you work towards things, good things happen. Did it speed up because we came towards a realization? Was that the point or did things not work out in the end? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm wondering if this is a comment on how he feels now versus how he felt 
seven years ago when he was having these interviews with Indy. It's, it's not something that I've had within all of the reviews I've had. I haven't had interviews between the conversations between two people within one. And I actually think that's like a fantastic device is to just have people talk about stuff. You know, maybe give a bit of extra concept, context to what we're doing within an album, especially if you've got instrumental stuff. Although to be fair, Nine Fingers tells the stories as clearly as he needs to without any over it doesn't over dramatize it it's as much as it needs to be in order to appreciate it but we've got burn featuring t davis here with lethal needle doing some of the production work on it oh the lo-fi aesthetic is con con it could con continue sir that's a smart move i like that love is this the end of us that's interesting panning of the vocals. because it sounds like it's going left to right like it's thoughts in your head right and it's kind of surreal especially with this really boomy kick with these brass parts and the toasty atmospheric guitar parts Miles, miles apart, and I can feel the breaking of my heart. Even though there was that regret, there's that distance here, that pain that comes associated with that. Knowing that you won't find anyone else like that. Nice repeater here, smart move here. So this is a recut, this is a reinvention of the original, isn't it? But all of us are still boxed up. Cause you're afraid to let them out Into the open air where we Could embrace all this love we share But all your fears have tied us down Yeah Trying to figure out You know, I'm just trying to figure some stuff out And kept us from the heights we dare Put the flame to the wood and blow the wood to the sky T Davis up shit i let slide life shit when you trust the wrong people think you got it good then they switch up on you like it's deepest life goes on though till you run into the next sequel i dismiss them don't got time for that lost time can't get it back i don't trust nobody mary jane always got my back and you can run and tell that whoa so if this is the end of us I'd like to lodge a formal complaint to Yeah, this is definitely a remix of Burn. I remember I remember before um how we had that line launching a formal complaint, you know? The head of all the universe for assigning me here to a broken dream. Cause I will give you all I have, but you'll hold it for a while, then just hand it back. Is this the lesson that I'm here to learn? The love's not made. He did well rapping in that first verse around the minute mark. You know, he had great flow. You could tell. I, I, I firmly believe like, like the clean vocals are Nine Fingers' strong point. But he did a good job with the rapping in the first part. And I think it was nice that he had a go at it, you know. The words came through clearly. The flow is pretty decent. Oh, burn. Is this the lesson that I'm here to T. Learn? Davis sounds very comfortable with his the element with his made. one. He's far, oh, very, very relaxed in that section that he had in that, that, that um, those bars learn. he had. I really got much else to say about T Davis. Like if we go back and listen through it, we'll find him. And kept us from the heights we die. Life shit, when you trust the wrong people, think you got it good, then they switch up on you like it's deepest. Life goes on though too. Yeah, life goes on. We're, we're, we're reinforcing the themes that we've heard throughout Burn, both in the previous version and this one. It's just from T. Davis's perspective, you know? It's nice for T. Davis to, el to elaborate on a little bit. All I have, but you'll hold it for a while, then just hand it back. Is this the lesson that I'm here to learn? The love's not made to build, but burn. 
It's nice to have that song title come in that late because it's almost like you're wondering why it's called Burn In. Oh, oh, I get it. I know they had it repeatedly repeated it earlier on but at the same time just for it to not be shoved into your face it's almost like you're not being spoon fed and i kind of like that I love the indie hip hop stuff. I like the low lo fi hip hop stuff we've got nowadays in the late twenty tens, early two thousands. It's it's twenty twenties, you know. It's uh kind of it's interesting because if you think about the nineteen twenties for like the swing stuff, this is kind of the, kind of like the antithesis of it, isn't it? It's just so relaxing and it, it just allows you to just simmer with it and vibe and reflect on what's being told to you in a way where you don't feel as if you're being agonized with it. Even if the people speaking it are so relaxed in their approach despite going through agony in their own right, you know? A burn featuring T Davis. Nice use of the double bass there, right? I'm pretty sure that's a double bass there, it sounds like it. And you got that burn there, that vinyl crispiness or something like that, or it could be the sound effect of something burning. Um, but yeah, this is the conclusion for my review of the album X Love by Nine Fingers. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It has been a great journey. I've really enjoyed my time listening to this, even though for Nine Fingers, I can only assume that it's been a difficult album to, to, to write. You know, it sounds like there was some painful stuff to encounter and go over, you know. It's nice to hear the perspective of someone going through this in their 40s. And, you know, this hasn't been being ageist or anything like that. It's literally just a lot of the stuff I hear that's about love comes from people who are in their, like, maybe their teens or like their 20s and like stuff's crazy but they're young enough to bounce back from it a lot of the time you know they're, they're not tied down with like kids or anything like that they hop from one to two but like i can only assume that as you get older you have more and more responsibilities and this stuff can really screw you up and for nine fingers to make an album that reflects not only on their own experiences and their own experiences with with love and finding that one person that the other people no matter how hard you try cannot match up to you know running a away from people because you feel as if you're not even ready to get into it yourself despite how much you badly want to to be in love to have that feeling back you know to to still prioritize their relationship with your daughters and remind them of how special and important they are and take to take care of them it's such a lovely wholesome thing and obviously i don't know nine fingers as a human being you know when people write albums that are this are like kind of create their, their own little story about their life and, and you if you take it at face value sometimes it can seem artificial and that wasn't really the case with this album it legitimately seems like this was an album where nine fingers wanted to tell you what it was like being who they are you know as i get older and they're trying to there's a sense of trepidation about the world and trying to understand it but also there is this maturity that comes through and never at any point did i find that there was like anything aside from frustration or sadness there was never any rage or f a feeling of things being totally i mean uh, you know I, I we talked to be fair we talked about <laughs> laying a complaint about the situation but it never came across as abrasive it's like nine fingers understood exactly what they needed to do in regards to telling people the story about their life and the journey they've been on and the regrets they've made and stuff without shoving it down people's throats or trying to force or manipulate their emotions it's a really authentic tale that appears to come from a really authentic musician and the vocals that they put forward um testament their ability to communicate and the stories they've told but also the the quality of the vocal performance was fantastic. You know, we had two different ways of approaching the same track with similar lyrics, and and bur both burns were different. I acknowledge now that I had a really slow start to this review, especially with the first one. I just didn't know how to how to take burn. I didn't know how to accept it. I was blown away by the entrance with those kind of weird kind of like if we play a little bit just to kind of like absorb it. It's just such an unusual chord progression. It's like, it's catchy and it makes musical sense to me now, but it's the kind of the wackiest intro to a track I've, an album I've heard in my entire life. And I love that to pieces. And that's also saying something because I've heard some really wild stuff. 
But but getting back onto Wild because that bom 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 it kind of reminds me of some of the PlayStation soundtracks I listened to the the RPG games I had where they had those really tense dramatic kind of like it's almost sci-fi-ish kind of like boss battle or something like that. I, I don't know how to describe it. And I hope I'm not causing any offense. Again, I think it replicates just the incredulous nature of the situation and especially as i've said multiple times that thing about logic and complaint that kind of sense of humor about it all that that genuine intent there regardless kind of speaks to just the how ridiculous the situation can be when we're in love and where we find ourselves even if it hurts you know his vocals were appropriate regardless and dating in your 40s and, and daughters dating in your 40s sounded sad like he was mourning it and daughters was so caring and kind. Love was trying to heal. And I think Burn One was a little more laid back as appropriate to the harmonies and the quality of the coloration involved with those different musical parts, the, the comping parts. But uh, I think it was also to match T. Davis's vibe as well as the one that Lethal um, Lethal Needle put in as a producer for that track. Special shout out again to uh, Kyle Appleton for his work with the production on the other tracks as well. Kyle did the production on the other tracks. I, I don't know what else to say about the vocals. The guy clear, clearly had sort of polished vocal technique, lovely texture to his voice there, sounded comfortable within his range there, nice bits of vibrato and legato passages there, knew when to emphasize certain words for effect. And it was a very balanced performance there, you know, and the vocal quality, the actual recording itself was fantastic. It sounded like they'd done a lot of practice and the practice paid off. Um, the structure of these tracks was interesting. Um, obviously, excluding the, the interviews where we had the, the chat between Indy and, and her father, these are mostly sort of verse, chorus, verse, chorus kind of structures. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's easy for people to follow. It doesn't alienate anyone. There weren't any solo sections. I mean, we had musical themes that were instantiated with various instruments that came in and out. And it was enough to keep it entertaining. Even Daughters, which was a longer one, was nonetheless entertaining the whole way through. Primarily, I think, because of the story that was told. I think Nine Fingers used each of these main tracks as storytelling devices, and it's kind of what you need. There's not really a, a need for an additional solo element there if your main sort of your main focal point is the singing, the the community, the actual literal communication thematically. So that's fine. And we just had instrumental intros and outros occasionally. And uh, each track had its own unique sort of vibe with it, especially with the guitar, the bass, drum parts, along with the organs and pianos, other bits like accordion and some uh, other like uh, jazzy instruments and burn, uh, the, the, the lo-fi one, the one at the end. We had double bass as well occasionally. It was great choice, great choices of acoustic instruments there. I think that if we'd gotten any heavier than the clean guitars in here, it would have made it a little bit too much. I think that having a lot of those clean elements here was gave it a sense of sweetness and, and, and warmth that I think was the aim of this entire album here, is that even if we've been hurt, we don't want to make it a painful experience doing it and to associate it purely with pain by making the musical about that. You know, you had really engaging, interesting themes like Burn, which was kind of... I don't know how to describe that harmony, dude. I don't. I'm lost for words on that one. I see, I, I think I gave the best descriptors I could at the time during my, my initial reaction to it. I'm um, dating in your 40s. Again, you had like the Mellotron and stuff like that. Like that was wild to have a Mellotron in there. It wasn't an instrument I expected, but it works so well, especially as like stacked on top of the other elements like the guitars and the drums and stuff like that. And his voice was like a low mid. So he could just put it what he wanted on top of it, especially the panning of the piano on the left and right. And it worked absolutely fine. There are lots of interesting instruments in here. And there wasn't a note out of place either. You know, I could tell that most of these parts had been recorded in a studio of some kind. And it was a great choice to do that. I think if you had too many synthetic electronic elements in here, it would have made it a little bit too cold sounding. You know, I know that probably sounds a little bit like kind of... I, I know I, people are going to disagree with me on that, but um, yeah, no, I won't go any further than that. I'm going to I'm gonna annoy people on that front. If I start talking about how I subjectively, in my opinion, feel that like you get more humanity out of playing an actual acoustic instrument than you do from like just shoving a whole bunch of digital samples in there, especially if you start quantizing and stuff like that. But the production, the recording, limiting, you know, mixing, mastering was great, you know. Um, each of the instruments was nicely filtered and EQ'd and had great stereo effects on them. The vocals were relatively untu untouched, you know. There were bits I didn't necessarily agree with, like the vocal, um, the vocal, the effects change on the vocals within the uh, inter interlude where he was talking about the, the, the song that he used to sing to his kid. I, I don't necessarily feel like that was the right way to approach it. 
because you had you like you had that really quick reverb in there i know we were kind of going for like a dream sequence or something like that it wasn't something i personally like it was appropriate see if i'm going to complain about something i have to give a better way of doing it and it's tricky because i don't really know if you'd added delay i would have gone creepy right I suppose maybe it was just a byproduct of trying to work with the audio from the interview itself, you know? Maybe the, maybe we just did the best we could and that's absolutely fine. Again, that, again, that is literally absolutely fine. And it got the effect we wanted. It did kind of remind me of like being sung to sleep and that, that's the point, isn't it, you know? And also it doesn't need to be sterilized and fully perfect and everything like that because it's literally someone singing a lullaby to someone during an interview like recorded five seven years ago you know it's totally fine you know, the guitar bass drums everything else was stacked really well um i liked the fact that burn the ninth track didn't sound too different tonally or in regards to the mastering as opposed to the other tracks i'm glad that their styles of production were capital you know compatible there um and that sounded like a cohesive thorough sorry structured album there and i suppose and in inevitably we just have ourselves an, a record here, X Love, which will be released on July the 1st, as I understand it. Where I think Nine Love has told the story they wanted to. It's been recorded well, it's been told well, and it's been produced well. I, I, just before we head over to the main camera, I do hope that Nine Fingers finds love. Um, I know I've prattled on a little bit in this review, primarily because it's got me sentimental. But I think that's the point of a well-structured, well-written album, isn't it? An album is supposed to make you want to engage and react to it and do something with it. And if it's making you think about it, then it succeeded. And I feel that that's the most beautiful thing about X Love is that I I just genuinely feel like a lot of people need to hear it because it will help them to appreciate maybe how good their parents were, or maybe it will help them to understand what the, it's like from the perspective of being a parent. Because you you don't want to be on one side or the other, you know. It's really important to try and understand people and their different positions. And I really hope that um, everyone involved and who's been mentioned in the story is doing well. That the interviews were absolutely adorable. Thank you for allowing us to um to, to, to have that little insight. It's great. It's, it's, it's really cool. Um, but effectively, this is my review of X Love by Nine Fingers. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this review, please do go show Nine Fingers some love via the various social medias. And I'm sure this will be on all major digital streaming platforms at some point soon, again on the 1st of July. Stay cool and stay safe. And please also remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. As you the hell more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you in the next review. Spot ends up.